Here we have Kim. Kim has been working overtime at the office and has been feeling kind of stressed lately. As a result, Kim has used overeating as a tool to help cope and relieve some stress. A good burger seems to do the trick. However, Kim tends to feel even more anxious and sad after an episode of binge eating as she lets those negative thoughts eat away at her. To understand why Kim resorts to binge eating, let's take a look inside her brain. Hey Kim, did you know stress can suppress your appetite and food intake by activating your fight or flight response? But once this response wears off, you get hungry and start to eat. Let's examine some of the structures involved. The two neural pathways involved in this association are the insular and prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is responsible for regulating one's impulses and actions. The insular cortex is involved in the regulation and reward of eating. Important hormones involved in stress-induced binge eating are insulin, which regulates blood sugar, leptin, which suppresses hunger, ghrelin, which makes you hungry, and cortisol, which interferes with the signals of leptin, stimulates the reward system in the brain, and makes food more appealing. Now let's take a closer look at the psychological mechanisms involved in stress and binge eating. Negative self-perception and body dissatisfaction are common in individuals with binge eating disorders, or BEDs, and can have a serious negative effect on mental health. Often, individuals with a BED struggle with emotional regulation using food to cope with negative emotions, stress, or boredom. Stress is linked to emotional eating where individuals consume food to cope with stressors. This stress-induced emotional eating is often driven by the desire to seek comfort or distraction from negative emotions. Evidence of this vicious cycle between BED and stress, where each can exacerbate the other. Kim could feel stressed at work and this could trigger binge eating which could then cause sadness and negative emotions leading to even more heightened stress which again leads to binge eating. Binge eating may be triggered or intensified during periods of heightened stress and conversely the psychological distress associated with BED can contribute to ongoing stress. The temporary relief from emotional distress provided by binge eating may reinforce the behavior furthering a cycle of stress and binge eating. So what makes Kim susceptible to binge eating? The prevalence of binge eating varies among cultures. Kim is from Canada, and as we will discuss more, this may make her more vulnerable to binge eating, which may lead to more severe disorders. Much of the available research about binge eating is focused on Western cultures. This may be attributed to the fact that eating disorders have been found to be most common among females in Western countries, such as the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. In Western cultures, thin bodies are perceived as the ideal body type, which has consecutively led to a fear of being labeled as fat. This can prompt an individual to be dissatisfied with their body image, which can lead to the onset of eating disorders such as bulimia, which is when someone goes through a period of binge eating and then compensatory behavior such as vomiting or extreme dieting. The consumption of Western media may also be a trigger for binge eating and bulimia, as the consumption of Western media is correlated with body dissatisfaction and stress, both of which are the triggers for bulimia as well as binge eating. Similar body ideals have been found in non-Western cultures, especially in East Asia. Incidences of body dissatisfaction and disordered eating have been rising in Eastern cultures, partly due to Western media pushing thin idealization. However, the prevalence of bulimia and binge eating in these countries is still significantly smaller compared to Western countries. This can be attributed to numerous factors, including accessibility to food. Approximately 12.8% of Americans and 18% of Canadians experience food insecurity. That is, they are unable to consistently obtain sufficient quality or quantity of food. This can be compared to Japan and South Korea, where respectively only 3.4% and 5.4% of citizens experience food insecurity. Contradictory, binge eating is a consequence of food insecurity, as individuals experiencing food insecurity may overeat when food is available to compensate for their low food intake when food is scarce. Food insecurity is a risk factor for binge eating and bulimia as individuals may feel obligated to indulge in compensatory behavior after binge eating. The underlying cause for this pattern may be stress, as food insecurity can cause a substantial amount of stress, and binge eating may act as a coping mechanism. When it comes to getting better, Kim has a few options. The first treatment option is psychotherapy. In psychotherapy, the individual will speak to a healthcare provider during regular therapy sessions. These sessions will allow the individual to understand why they may binge eat and how they deal with stress. The healthcare provider will also help the individual create a plan to overcome their binge eating.
by helping them develop healthy habits such as eating at regular intervals and minimizing snacking. If Kim doesn't want to try psychotherapy, she can also try pharmacotherapy. This option will use depression, epilepsy, or ADHD medication to regulate Kim's emotions. This way, she is not as stressed and won't feel inclined to binge eat to relieve her stress. Alongside the use of psychotherapy or pharmacotherapy, Kim should also consider making lifestyle changes to experience the benefits of the treatment. Some of these lifestyle changes include monitoring her eating, identifying triggers for binge eating, and limiting how often she weighs herself. After doing this, Kim can regulate her stress levels and manage her stress in a healthy way.